great to be back in the studio here today with you and filming another vlog um, episode for our channel. And today I thought it would be fun to share with you uh, the technique that I use to make this, these little um, art journals. They're handmade journals and it's um, stitched with a ribbon on the side um, and it holds the whole journal together. They're all, it's all hand painted and it is made completely out of mixed media paper. So I'm going to share with you my technique in doing that. I wanted to come up with, I had this desire to come up with a new um, art journal because, you know, I use the Strathmore journal uh, every month and it's um, wonderful but it's, it's not handmade. And I wanted to come up with a format that would allow me to create uh, something that uh, had a, a wonderful handmade feel to it and that I could use as a themed journal. So I thought it would be fun to share it with you today. And I also wanted to come up with something that wasn't stitched with linen, that, that I could use fabric, um, ribbons, just old pieces of, of uh, fabrics and things like that to stitch it with. I thought that would be really fun. So I'm going to share that with you today. I just love the yummy colors and the pages. And so let's play in the studio. To make this little journal, you're going to need mixed media paper. And I used a roll of mixed media paper. But you can use uh, a tablet or just large sheets and cut the uh, pages or the, the sheets down to make your book. Um, it doesn't really matter, but I highly recommend mixed media paper because uh, it's going to take um, more of an abuse and you want it to stay together. And I'm going to show you how I kept it together um, uh, with the, um, with using the ribbon ties. So the first thing we're going to do is I have uh, most of the signatures cut already, but I'm going to show you how I cut them. And don't worry about if you're using a roll like I did, don't worry about the curl because once you start to paint them, then the curl is going to go away so you don't have to worry about it. And I also have the cover cut already too. I'm going to give you the dimensions for the cover. And what I love about the cover is that it has these folded, folded edges which hold your pages back. It's like a natural bookmark. And I'll give you the dimensions for that. So quite simply, all I did was, and because I'm using a roll, I, I used my gesso just to hold it and keep it in place. There we go. And it, it was six and a half by 12. So this is 12 inches this way, six and a half. And we're going to measure it with my ruler. Oops, wrong side. And I'm not big on completely accurate measurements. If you want to measure it absolutely perfectly, uh, go right ahead. But that's about six and a half right there, maybe just a little bit bigger. I like my pages at different sizes. I think it's more interesting and more fun. So then I just kind of set it down and use my bone folder to fold it. Don't worry about crumpling or, or crunching the page because it's going to get crumpled and crunched when you create it as a journal, too. Fold it on the other side. So just take your bone folder again. Make sure you get a nice, a nice fold. If you don't have a bone folder, you can use scissors. You can use a heavy pair of scissors to do it. Uh, don't worry about having the absolute um, perfect equipment. And now we're going to rip it. And to do that, I'm just going to lay my straight edge down, hold it up to the edge. I like a good deckled edge. I just think it looks so much prettier than a cut edge. And pull it back. And don't worry if you get a little strip left over. You want to move your thumb down to the end though. But if you do get a little strip left over, it doesn't really matter. See, like this, I never worry about, about that kind of little edge at the end. And then fold it and use your bone folder again. OK, 
pet. So the pages are six and a half by twelve. And I have five pages. And the cover, which I did the same way, it's just much longer because it's 15 and a half. No, it's 15 by 7 ish. <laughs> so it's, I'm not great at measurements. 15 and 15 by 7 ish. So it's much longer. Um, and you can make it any size you want. You're not going to hurt my feelings if you decide to make it smaller or tiny or whatever. But that's basically how you do it. Now you have all your pages and you have the cover. And the cover. I folded it in half, and of course it was longer than the pages. It came out to here, and what I wanted to do was make sure that it would cover the signatures like that. So you just have to gauge, you know, how where you want it to fold. But it's pretty simple. Pretty straightforward, pretty easy. Now we're going to paint them, and this is the fun part. In painting the cover and the pages, uh, I decided to use a variety of paints. And of course, I want it to be different than this book. Um, I wanted to use different colors because I'm going to create a completely different theme journal for this. And I'm using Titan Buff, Carbon Black, Titanium White and a little bit of Adirondack color wash. Uh, it's an old espresso that I have that I use a lot. And uh, so you want to have on, on, the, on the cover, you want more paint and less wash because you want the cover to be thicker. You want it to hold up. So we're working on getting a lot of plastic on the page, and that's basically what paint is, is just plastic that you're putting on here. And I'm going to have to put my gloves on here in just a second. And as you can see, I'm just throwing paint on. I have no plan. I'm just enjoying the moment, and um, it's just a wonderful meditative process. It's part of what I, what I love about about art is really letting everything go. All the issues that you have going on in your life, any problems, arguments, just come in the studio and just start painting. Okay. So we're going to put this aside and we're going to start on the pages. And of course we have to paint both sides. But we'll do that and we'll show you what it looks like. So I'm almost finished painting uh, my pages and one of the tips I wanted to um, share with you is that in using a large brush, I hope you can see that, um, and putting your uh, little paint circles together, it, it creates this wonderful effect with a larger brush so that, so that you have a, kind of a dry brush effect. And if you get paint just on the edges, uh, it creates some wonderful uh, swirls on your page. So that's kind of a fun tip to share with you. So I didn't use a small brush to paint. I used a rather um, large, just an old chip brush. It's you know something made in China, but it, it serves the purpose really well. So the next step is going to be putting gel medium on the spines. And the reason that you're going to do this is, once the pages are dry, of course, is uh, because you want to you want to plasticize this area. That's where your ribbon is going to go, and you don't want it to rip through. That's why you would use a wax linen in the first place. Is because if you just use a plain thread, it's just going to rip through your paper. So in in building up layers of plastic on the page, you're going to keep that ribbon in place. It's going to really help. I'm just going to use a brush, and I'm just going to 
paint the gel on the spine just like this. It's pretty simple. All you have to do. And then I'm going to paint the other side and I'm going to just going to do page after page after page until it's all dry. And we'll be back when that happens. Okay, my pages are dry. I used the gel medium on the spines and now the next step is clear gesso and if you decide you don't want to use clear gesso on your pages that's fine um, but doesn't you know you don't have to the reason I'm using clear gesso is to seal the pages it adds just one more layer and it's it's going to keep help keep your ribbon from tearing through the, the page so um, that's why I'm doing it it also um, when I whenever I use the um, color wash, the um, espresso like walnut inks and stuff, when I mix it with paint, you know, it, it's it's not exactly, sometimes it, it will bleed through. So I like to use the, uh, I like to use clear gesso to stabilize the page and, uh, and it also keeps the pages from sticking together. And so that's why I do it. So I'm going to put a coat of this on and then as soon as it's dry, and we can stitch it together. I'll be back. My pages are completely gessoed and the spines have been uh, gel, I put gel medium on all of the spines. Everything's dry as you can see and uh, now I've just put them all together. I've lined up the spines of the pages or the signatures rather with the spine of the book and I'm securing it with large paper clips. Really simple technique and a wonderful art tool. And now I'm going to uh, just cut through the spine. And in this book, I cut through in three places and I'm gonna cut through this book in three places. I wanted the tie to go low because I knew I wanted to put this image on the front because this is going to be a botanical book. So that's why I put it there. On the other book, on this book, I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm still going to make just three cuts, three simple cuts, and, um, and I'm going to tie it the same way I did, but it's going to be just slightly different because we want to have a different book, right? And. Uh, I used this rayon ribbon that I got at uh, Essentials. It's hand dyed ribbon. They hand dye it there. It's an absolutely awesome ribbon. I think it's $6.50 for five yards and I used probably three yards because I wanted, I really want to stuff this book and I didn't know exactly how much ribbon I wanted to tie it off with so I left it really long and then I can cut it later and you know use it for something else. So in this book, we're just going to make three cuts. We're going to make one at the top and one down here and then one in the center. So I'll show you how we're going to do that. First of all, I put them all together with my paper clips. I have it all ready to go. And I have an old book that I've used to punch holes in and do things, you know, all different kinds of things. It's a great old book. And then you want to hang on to this book because painting these pages are, is really fun too. It's a wonderful texture. Another little tip there. Uh, so in this book I'm going to use um, the same rayon ribbon. Now you can use any kind of ribbon that you want. Just make sure that it's thin enough to actually thread through a cruel needle. And that's what I'm using. I'm using actually chenille needles, but you can use any kind of cruel needle. Something with a wide um, head to it and um, with it with a opening has to be large enough to to take the uh, the ribbon or the sari silk or whatever you're going to use to hand tie your your journal with so i'm going to make a cut right about here actually just a slit and we have to go through all the layers so you're going to push down and you're going to hit the book you don't want it to be too big but big enough to put the to slide the ribbon through 
Then turn it over to see how you're doing. Yep, got a nice cut right here. And then we're going to do that two more times. So I have the, the uh, slits cut into the book in three places. I just used a little X-Acto blade to do that. And now I'm going to, I have my ribbon threaded with two needles. And I'm going to pull it through from the back the outside of the book and then on the other end I'm going to leave the middle alone for right now and don't worry if it gives you a little bit of trouble you might have to go back and, and cut it if you need to and at this point you're coming up through the center of your book There we go. And just pull these pieces off. Just being careful that you don't rip it. Okay, and then you want it to be pretty even Steven here. And then you're going to go back through the middle hole here in the center of your book or wherever you decided if you wanted to put it lower or up higher it doesn't really matter wherever you decide to put it but you want to use your finger to move the the ribbon over to put uh, to make sure that you're not stabbing your ribbon because you don't want to do that so use the top one first come through and then use this one the uh, using two uh, needles works out really well for this technique and then you're going to go back right next to it make sure that you don't that you don't stab the ribbon you just put through or the other one too so because you don't want to catch it now this one you're going to pull around the other side so that you can tie a little knot. And now you can take the cruel needles off. Tie a knot. And there you go. If you want to tie it, then you can. If you want to just cut it off, you can do that. Fold the flaps in. Hand tied ribbon journal. And I don't know what it's going to be yet, but I'm sure it will tell me. <laughs> Here we go. Hope you enjoyed that segment. I know it was a little bit longer maybe, um, but I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you make your own hand, hand tied journals. And uh, next time we're going to uh, work on handmade books. This is a little travel journal that I made. If you're on Facebook, um, then you know we talked about this. I asked everybody, would you like me to make this? And everyone, it was a definitive yes. So we're gonna make this. And I leathered the, uh, the outside of the book. It's an antique book that I gutted and then made all of the signatures for it and uh, finished the uh, the outside of the book in a wonderful leather technique. So I'm going to show you how to do that next time. So we're at chow for now and we'll see you then. We'll see you later. Bye.